بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وبعد we've uh, uh, السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته brothers uh, we've reached the 29th sitting alhamdulillah so we, we are at the end of the book now and brother we'll see him tomorrow inshallah we'll conclude with the final lesson uh, and that will complete the book by the permission of Allah so the shaykh he says المجلس المجلس التاسع والاشترون في التوبة he says the uh, 29th sitting uh, and the topic is uh, Tawbah. So, Fitawbah. It says Fitawbah here, meaning uh, seeking forgiveness. Yeah? Seeking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, the Shaykh begins. He says, <clears throat> He says, We'll read from the introduction, inshallah. Alhamdulillah, Hilladi Nasaba min kulli kainin ala wahdaniyatihi burhanan. وتصرف في خليقته كما شاء عزا وسلطانا واختار المتقين فوهب لهم أمن وإيمانا وعم المذنبين بحمله ورحمته بحلمه ورحمته عفوا وغفرانا ولم يقطع أزراق أرزاق أهل المأسيته جودا وامتنانا روح أهل الإخلاص روح أهل الإخلاص بنسيم قربه وحذر يوم يوم الحساب بجسيم كربه وحفظ السالك نحو رضاه في سربه وأكرم المؤمن إذ كتب الإيمان في قلبه حكم في بريته فأمر ونهى وأقام بمعونته ما ضعف ووهى وَأَيْقَذَ بِمَوْئِذَتِهِ مَنْ غَفَلَ وَسَهَا وَدْعَ الْمُذْنِبَ إِلَى التَّوْبَةِ لِغُفْرَانِ ذَنْبِهِ رَبٌّ عَظِيمٌ لَا يُمَاثِلُ الْأَنَامِ وَغَنِيٌّ كَرِيمٌ لَا يَحْتَاجُ إِلَى الشَّرَابِ وَالتَّعَامِ الْخَلْقُ مُفْتَقِرُونَ إِلَيْهِ وَعَلَى الدَّوَامِ وَمُتَّرُونَ إِلَى رَحْمَتِهِ فِي اللَّيَالِ وَالْأَيَّامِ أحمده حمد آبد لربه معتذر إليه من تقصيره وذنبه وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له شهادة مخلص من قلبه وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله المصطفى من حزبه صلى الله عليه وعلى أبي بكر خير صحبه ولا أمر الذي لا يسير الشيطان في سربه وعلى عثمان الشهيد لا في صف الحرب وعلى علي موينه, موينه, موينه في حربه وعلى آله وأصابه ومن اهتدى بحديه وسلم تسليما So then uh, the Sheikh uh, completes that introduction for us as he has done uh, every lesson and each sitting Alhamdulillah and of the rough, the rough translation of that being all praises are due to Allah, the one who placed in every creature a proof indicating Allah's oneness. He deals with his creatures as he wills out of his might and sovereignty. He chose the pious ones and bestowed on them security and faith. Due to his forbearance and mercy, he immersed the sinners with pardon and forgiveness, not cutting off the provision of those who disobey him out of his generosity and kindness. He relieves the sincere people with the breeze of closeness to him and he warned about the tremendous grief of the day of reckoning, i.e. the day of judgment. He preserves the one who takes the path toward his pleasure as he traverses within his passageway. He honored the believer when he inscribed pure faith in his heart. He made the decision in his creatures, so he commanded and prohib- uh, prohibit- uh, prohibited. He strengthens with his support whatever becomes weak and he revives with his admonition the one who forgets and is neglectful. He invited the sinful person to repent for forgiveness of his sins. A great Lord who does not resemble the creatures. He is independent and bounteous. He does not need food nor drink. The creatures are in constant need of him and are in dire need of his mercy day and night or night and day. I praise him. I praise him. The praise of one truly who worships his Lord, who confesses to his Creator while asking forgiveness for his uh, remissness and sin, 
I bear witness that none has the right to be worshipped but he alone without any partners the testimony of the one who is sincere from the bottom of his heart so the Sheikh mentions that and then he also says the latter part of the introduction he says I, I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his chosen, is his slave and chosen messenger may peace and blessings of Allah be upon him Abu Bakr, his best companion, Umar, the one whom the devil does not walk near, Uthman, the one who attained martyrdom, but not while in the rows of a battlefield, Ali, his helper in battle, and upon the Prophet's family, the Prophet Sallallahu family, his companions, and whoever follows their guidance, or his guidance, the guidance of the Prophet Sallallahu and, and then them. So then, uh, the Sheikh, he says, he says, Ikhwani, he says, Ikhwani, Ikhtimu Shahra Ramadan Bitawbati ilallahi min maasi Wal inabati ilayhi bifi'lin ma yurdih Fa inna al-insana la yakhlu min al-khata'i wa taqsiri Wa kullu bani adami Wa kullu bani adam khata' Wa khair al-khata'in at-tawabun وقد حث الله في كتابه وحث النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في خطابه الاستغفار الله تعالى وتوبة إليه فقال سبحانه وأن استغفروا ربكم ثم توبوا إليه يمنئكم متى يمتعكم متاء حسنا إلى أجل مسمى ويؤتي كل ذي فضل فضله وَإِن تَوَلَّوْا فَإِنِّي أَخَافُ عَلَيْكُمْ عَذَابَ يَوْمٍ كَبِيرٍ وَقَالَ تَعَالَى <تصفيق> قُلْ إِنَّمَا أَنَا بَشَرٌ مِثْلُكُمْ يُوحَى إِلَيَّ أَنَّمَا إِلَٰهُكُمْ إِلَٰهٌ وَاحِدٌ فَاسْتَقِيمُوا إِلَيْهِ وَاسْتَغْفِرُوهُ وَقَالَ تَعَالَى وَتُوبُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا أَيُّهَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ وَقَالَ سُبْحَانَ يا أيها الذين آمنوا توبوا إلى الله توبة نصوحا عسى ربكم أن يكفر عنكم سيئاتكم ويدخلكم جنات تجري من تحتها الأنهار وقال تعالى إن الله يحب التوابين ويحب المتطهرين والآيات, والآيات في ذكر التوبة عديدة so, uh, Let's uh, translate that إن شاء الله so then the Sheikh, he says, um, my brothers, complete the month of Ramadan, seal the month of Ramadan and complete the month of Ramadan by repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from your sins and turn to him by doing things that please him. For indeed, man is not free from error and the, uh, and the children of Adam are not free from error. All the children of Adam are fallible. They are able to make mistakes and the best of them are those who repent from their sins constantly. Allah has indeed urged the people in his book. Likewise, the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his hadith and his speech to seek Allah's forgiveness and repent to him. As he said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and that you seek forgiveness of your Lord and then turn to him, he will provide for you a goodly provision until an appointed term and he will grant his grace to everyone possessed of merit. And if you turn away, then surely I fear for you the punishment of a dreadful day. That's Surah to Hud, verse 3. And also the most high statement where he said, Say, I am only a mortal like you. It is revealed to me that your God is one God. So, so don't go. Uh, so go ye straight to Him. So go straight to Him without deviating, and ask forgiveness of Him and woe to the idolaters. Why? Because the idolaters used to try to use a middleman or middle person or a middle way. Or we are, we are asking these um, idols to get close to Allah, but they wouldn't go direct. And Allah is saying here, go directly, ask me directly. That's the Tawheed of Allah. Surah Al Fusilat, verse 6. Then also the statement of the Most High and turn you to Allah altogether, O believers, that you may prosper. Surah Al Nur, verse 31. 
and also his statement, O oh, you who believe, turn to Allah in sincere repentance. It may be that your Lord will remit the evil effects of your deeds and admit you into gardens through which streams flow. At Surah Al-Tahreem, verse 8. And there's an extra benefit there uh, to mention actually, which I'll mention inshallah, that, that sometimes it goes, uh, it goes uh, unthought about that when you commit sins, they actually have effects. They actually have effects. And uh, remember, one of the scholars say, Sheikh Abdul Razak al-Badr, that, that when uh, you uh, sin, you know, every time you sin, then you are cutting yourself short from the blessing of Allah. That's something, if you did not sin, there's something good would have come from it. As in, you are being obedient to Allah. But when you sin, you're cutting short, you're cutting yourself short. So sins have effects, right? So then the Sheikh also mentions here, he says, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Allah loves those who constantly depend to him and those who purify themselves. Surah Al-Baqarah verse 222. And then the Sheikh says, you know, there are many verses that talk about, um, uh, that revolve around uh, repentance, tawbah, forgiveness and repentance. Uh, and they are numerous. And these are just some of a few that we have mentioned. So let's carry on. So then the Sheikh, he says, um, So now we're going to talk about the ahadith now So what we'll do is We will go through them one by one inshallah وَأَمَّ فَمِنْهَا عَنِ الْأَغَرِّ يَسَارِ عن, عَنِ الْأَغَرِّ بْنِ الْيَسَارِ ابن يسار المزني رضي الله عنه قال قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يا أيها الناس توبوا إلى الله واستغفروا فإني أتوب في اليوم مئة مرة رواه مسلم. So the first hadith it is narrated by Al Agharri bin Yasad Al Muzani. Uh, may Allah be pleased with him. He said that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "O oh people, repent to Allah and ask for His forgiveness. For verily I repent a hundred times a day, collected by a Muslim." The next hadith, um, which is um, uh, narrated by Abu Huraira وعن أبو هريرة رضي الله عنه قال سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول إني لأستغفر الله وأتوب إليه في اليوم أكثر من سبعين مرة رواه البخاري So then the next hadith by, uh, narrated by Abu Huraira رضي الله عنه he said he said surely he said that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said Surely I seek Allah's forgiveness and I repent to him more than 70 times a day. Collected by Al-Bukhari. The next hadith then, we'll just read in Arabic. وَعَنْ عَنَسِ بْنُ مَالِكْ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ قَالَ قَالَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمُ اللَّهُ أَشَدُّ فَرَحًا بِتَوْبَةِ يَبْدِهِ حِينَ يَتُوبُ لَيْهِ مِنْ أَحَدِكُمْ كَانَ عَلَى رَاحِلَتِهِ بِأَرْضٍ فَلَاتٍ فانقلتت فانفلتت منه وعليها تعامه وشرابه فأيس منها فأتى شجرة فاتجع في ذلها وقد أيس من راحلته فبينما هو كذلك إذ هو بها قائمة عنده فأخذ فأخذ بختامها ثم قال من شدة الفرح اللهم أنت عبدي وأنا ربك أخ أخطأوا من شدة الفرح رواه مسلم وإنما يفرح سبحانه بتوبة بتوبة عبده لمحبته للتوبة والعفو والرجوع عبده إليه بعد هربه منه وعن أنس وابن عباس رضي الله عنهم أن الرسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال لو أن لو أن لابن آدم واديا من ذهب أحب أن يكون له واديان ولن يملأ فاه إلا التراب ويتوب الله ويتوب الله على ويتوب الله على من تاب متفق عليه. So then the Sheikh he says it is narrated by Anas رضي الله عنه who said that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said Allah is happier with his slaves repentance when he repents to him. Then one of you who is traveling on his riding animal in a desert land. And then all of a sudden the riding animal slips away, taking off with his provisions of food and drink 
on its back. Having lost all hope to get it back, he comes to a tree and lays down under its shade, losing all hope about his ride. All of a sudden, while he is in that state, he finds his riding animal standing in front of him. So he grabbed the rein of the ride and then out of uh, a, a severe joy, uh, he says, he said, Oh Allah, you are my slave and I am your Lord. He committed this error out of extreme joy collected by Muslim. Then the Shaykh goes on to say and he says, Allah the glorified, the most high, is happy with his slave's repentance only because he loves to be repented to. He loves to forgive and he loves the, the returning of his slave to him after the slave has run, run away from him. It is also narrated by Anas, uh, Anas and Ibn Abbas uh, عنه, that the Prophet ﷺ said, if the son of Adam had a valley filled with gold, he would desire another one. Nothing will fill his mouth but the dirt. And Allah accepts the repentance of, of whoever turns to him in repentance. Collected by Al-Bukhari and Muslim. So then the Shaykh, he says, he says here, فَالتَّوْبَةُ هِيَ الرُّجُوهُ مِنْ مَأْسِيَةِ اللَّهِ إِلَىٰ طَاعَتِهِ لِأَنَّهُ سُبْحَانُهُ هُوَ الْمَعْبُودُ حَقًّا وَحَقِيقَةُ الْبُودِيَّةِ هِيَ التَّذَلُّلُ وَالْخُدُوءُ لِلْمَعْبُودِ مَحَبَّةً وَتَعْذِيمًا فَإِذَا هَسَدَ مِنَ الْأَبْدِ شُرُودٌ شُرُودٌ عَنْ طَاعَةِ رَبِّهِ فَتَوْبَتُهُ أَنْ يَرْجَعَ أَنْ يَرْجَعَ إِلَيْهِ وَيَقِفَ بِبَابِهِ مَوْقِفَ الْفَقِيرِ الذَّلِيلِ الْخَائِفِ الْمُنْكَسِرِ بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ So then the Shaykh, he said, uh, he's explaining what the term repentance is. And he says that repentance, a tawbah, it means returning from the state of being disobedient to Allah to the state of being obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is because he, Jalla is the only true deity who, deser who is deserving of all worship. And the reality of worship is by showing complete humility and humbleness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with love and veneration. If the slave rebelled, or rebels against his Lord, then this repentance is by returning back to him, standing at his door like the one in need, expressing humility and fear and humbleness before his Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So then the Shaykh, he says, he says, At-tawbah, وَلَتَسْوِيفُ بِهَا لِأَنَّ اللَّهَ أَمَرَ بِهَا وَرَسُولُهُ وَأَوَامِرُ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ كُلُّهَا كُلِّهَا عَلَى الْفَوْرِ وَأَوَامِرُ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ كُلُّهَا عَلَى الْفَوْرِ وَالْمُبَادَرَةِ لِأَنَّ الْعَبْدَ لَا يَدْرِي مَاذَا يَحْصُلُ لَهُ بِالتَّأْخِيرِ فَلَلَّهُ أَن يفجعه الموت يفجعه الموت فلا يستطيع التوبة ولأن الإصرار على المأسية يوجب قسوة, قسوة, قسوة القلب وبعده عن الله عز وجل وضعف, وضعف إيمانه فإن الإيمان يزيد فإن الإيمان يزيد بالطاعات وينقص بالإسيان ولأن الإصرار على المأسية يوجب إلفها والتشبث بها فإن النفس إذا اعتادت على شيء صعب عليها فراقه وحينئذ يأسر عليه التخلص أو تخلص من مأسيته ويفتح عليه الشيطان باب معاص أخرى أكبر وأعظم مما كان عليه ولذلك قال أهل العلم وأرباب السلوك إن المعاصي بريد الكف بريد بريد الكفر ينتقل الإنسان فيها مرحلة مرحلة حتى يزيغ عن دينه كله نسأل الله العافية والسلامة والتوبة التي أمر الله بها هي التوبة النصوح التي تشتمل على شرائط التوبة وهي خمسة. So let's just stop there for a second before we go into the next section. 
So then the Shaykh, he says, it is obligatory to hasten towards repenting to Allah. It is not permissible to delay repentance. This is because Allah and his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, have commanded us to repent. And all the commands of Allah and his messenger must not be delayed. Rather, they must be executed immediately. The slave does not know what will happen to him in the future. Perhaps death will overtake him, placing a barrier between him and repentance. This is also because persisting upon committing sin leads to your heart becoming like a stone. Right? And hard. It keeps the heart far away from Allah and weakens your faith. Indeed, faith increases with obedience and it decreases with disobedience. Also persisting, so Iman increases and it decreases. Also persisting upon committing sins leads to getting used to it and clinging to that sin. And if the soul is accustomed to something, it will make it more difficult to give it up. It will be hard on him to desist from it. Then the devil will open for him the other, other doors, other doors, stepping up that, that level of sin, turning up the volume. So you start with something small and then, you know, it'll lead to something worse. You know, so more doors of evil open that are worse and more major than the one that the, the sin is already committing. For this reason, the people of knowledge and the, uh, uh, the people of knowledge have said sin is the path to disbelief. They mentioned here as well, um, uh, from terms of psychology as well, but uh, the, 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 uh, the, the, the people of knowledge have said that sin is the path to disbelief. A person moves on it from one level to another until he will totally deviate from his religion. And then the Sheikh says, we ask Allah so, uh, uh, wala, to grant us security and protection from this. And then the Sheikh says, the repentance which Allah has commanded us with is a sincere repentance that must meet the five conditions of repentance and they are as follows. So these are the conditions that we're going to go through shortly, inshallah, that we need to meet in order for our repentance to be a true repentance. And just one thing I wanted to mention about this, what I remember from uh, uh, from a, a different scholar, I think Sheikh Abdul Razak al-Badr mentioned one of his lessons that um, uh, when we're looking at repentance and, and, and a person sinning, and that when they sin, when you first start off sinning, you know it's wrong. And you have that in your heart, you know, your conscience, is telling you, you know, that's wrong. That good advisor within you that's advising you is wrong, is wrong. You feel, you know, you feel down about it. Uh, but as you continue and you continue and you delve further and you repeat the sins and you get, and then as the Sheikh mentioned here, it increases as one thing leads to something more worse and the Shaitan opens all these doors and you end up getting engulfed by it. Then what happens is that, that conscience of yours that's telling you the advisor in you, that sincere advisor telling you, you know, that's wrong, that's wrong, and then you feel bad about it, that eventually dies, it goes away. You will no longer get that anymore. Because the more you sin, the more you go down that path, that the, the harder it is for you to come back. And other scholars as well have talked about this, uh, Ibn Qayyim al Jawzi as well, actually. I can't remember the book, uh, but, but as mentioned previously uh, uh, about these, uh, about sins and how they are. Uh, and, and how they take you away uh, from the path of Allah and how it can become very difficult to return. So we've got to be very wary of this, as the Sheikh mentioned. So let's go on to uh, uh, those five conditions uh, of repentance that need to be met. The conditions need to be met for it to be a true and sincere repentance. Yeah? So then the Sheikh, he says, he says, Al-Awwal, first, the first condition, Al-Awwalu. أن تكون خالصة لله عز وجل بأن يكون الباعث لها حب الله حب الله وتعذيمه ورجاء الثوابه والخوف من يقابه فلا يريد بها شيئا من الدنيا ولا تزلفا عند مخلوق فإن أراد هذا لم يقبل لم يق لم تقبل توبته لأنه لم يتب إلى الله وإنما تاب إلى الغرض الذي قصده. So this is important. The Sheikh says the first condition it must be done sincerely for Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, which means that the motivation to repent is is the love and veneration of Allah while hoping for His reward and fearing His punishment. So the repenting person uh, he doesn't intend with it anything from the world from the affairs of the dunya. 
or to be close to the creatures or you know for whatever other um goals or purposes you might have but it's for it should be for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only sincerely for him it shouldn't be for a reason of the dunya whatever that reason may be um and so then the shaykh says and if those are his intentions his repentance will not be accepted because he did not repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rather, he repented to obtain a worldly goal from the goals of the worldly life, wherever that might be. So then the shaykh, he says, Athani, and the second condition, أَنْ يَكُونَ نَادِمًا حَزِنًا عَلَى مَا سَلَفَ مِنْ ذَنْبِهِ يَتَمَنَّ أَنَّهُ لَمْ يَحْصُلْ مِنْهُ لِأَجْلِ أَنْ يُحْدَثَ لَهُ ذَلِكَ النَّدِمْ إِنْ إِنَابَةً إِلَّهِ وَانْكِسَارًا بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ وَمَقْتًا لِنَفْسِ اللَّتِي أَمَرَتْهُ بِسُوءِ فَتَكُونُ تَوْبَتُهُ أَنَاقِيدَةٍ وَبَسِيرَةٍ So then the Sheikh says the second condition, he says he must be in a state of regret. He must be regretful and be sad about his previous sins, what sin, the sins he committed wishing that he did not commit them in order that this regret will motivate him to turn to Allah with humility while being angry at his soul for it commanding him with this evil so that his repentance will be based on belief and insight. So that's the second condition. So then the Shaykh, he says, Athalithu, the third condition, an an yuqli'a anil ma'siyati fawran فَإِنْ كَانَتِ الْمَأْسِيَةُ بِفِئْلِ مُحَرَّمٍ تَرَكَهُ فِي الْحَالِ وَإِنْ كَانَتْ وَإِنْ كَانَتِ الْمَأْسِيَةُ بِتَرْكِ وَاجِبٍ فَعَلَهُ فِي الْحَالِ إِنْ كَانَ مِمَّا يُمْكِنُ قَضَاؤُهُ كَالزَّكَاةِ وَالْحَجِّ فَلَا تَصِحُّ أَتَوْبَةُ مَعَ الْإِصْرَارِ عَلَى الْمَأْسِيَةِ فَلَوْ قَالَ إِنَّهُ تَابَ مِنْ مِنْ رِبَا مِنْ الرِّبَا مَثَلًا فَهُوَ مُسْتَمِرٌّ so then the Sheikh he says the third condition and he says he must refrain from committing the sin immediately. If the sin is committing an abomination, then he must desist from it. And if it is abandoning one of the obligations, then he must establish the obligation immediately. As long as the obligation that he abandoned is something that can be made up, such as uh, giving in charity, alms giving, and for example, pilgrimage, the hajj. hajj. Repentance will not be accepted if a person is persistent upon a sin. If he said, for example, I repent from dealing an interest, while he continues to deal in it, his repentance is not valid, and this repentance of his is nothing but a mocking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and his verses and his signs. It will only keep him far away from his Lord. Likewise, if he repented from not praying in congregation, while he continues not to pray in the congregation, his repentance is invalid. So that's quite clear, alhamdulillah, that's clear. So then, the Shaykh, he says, وَإِذَا كَانَتْ وَإِذَا كَانَتْ الْمَأْسِيَةُ فِيمَا يَتَعَلَّقُ بِحُقُوقِ الْخَلْقِ لَمْ تَصِحْ تَوْبَةُ لَمْ تَصِحْ التَّوْبَةُ مِنْهَا حَتَّى يَتَخَلَّسَ مِنْ تِلْكَ الْخُقُوقِ فَإِذَا كَانَتْ مَعْسِيَتُهُ بِأَخْذِ مَانٍ لِلْغَيْرِهِ أَوْ جَهْدِهِ لَمْ تَصِحْ تَوْبَتُهُ حَتَّى يُؤَدِّيَ الْمَالَ إِلَى صَاحِبِهِ إِنْ كَانَ حَيًّا أَوْ إِلَى وَرَثَتِهِ إِنْ كَانَ مَيِّتًا فَإِنْ لَمْ يَكُنْ لَهُ وَرَثَةٌ أَدَّاهُ إِلَى بَيْتِ الْمَالِ وَإِ إن كان لا يدري من صاحب المال تصدق به له والله سبحانه يعلم به وإن كانت مأسيته بغيبة مسلم وجب أن يستحله من ذلك إن كان قد علم بغيبته إياه أو خاف أن يعلم بها وإلا استغفر 
له وثنا عليه بصفاته المحمودة في المجلس الذي اغتابه في فإن الحسنات يذهبن السيئات So then the Sheikh says if the sin that he commits relates to the rights of the people, the hukuk of the people, then he must return their rights back to them. Otherwise his repentance is invalid. If he took someone's wealth, for example, or denied someone wealth which they were entitled to, his repentance from it will not be valid until he returns the wealth back to its owner. If he is alive or back to his, uh, you know, uh, if he is alive, then return it back to him. Or if he isn't, then back to his heirs or the ones who in inherit that from the one who died. And if he does not have any heirs, then he should return the wealth to the treasure, the treasury of the Muslim, the Muslim treasury. If he does not know the owner of the wealth, then he should give it away for charity and Allah, and Allah is aware of it. If he spoke ill of someone in the absence, for example, backbiting. So if he backbited somebody, for example, he should go and ask for forgiveness if the individual is aware of it. Or if he is afraid that he may be aware of it, otherwise he can ask forgiveness for, for that individual and praise him with his praiseworthy attributes in the gathering where he sat and backbited that person or spoke ill of him before. For indeed, good deeds repel and erase evil deeds. Good deeds re erase evil deeds. So then... Um, the Sheikh he says وَتَصِحُّ التَّوْبَةُ مِنْ ذَنْبٍ مَعَ الْإِسْرَارِ عَلَى غَيْرِهِ لِأَنَّ الْأَعْمَالَ تَتَبَعَضُ التَّابِعُونَ أَفْوَلْ لِأَنَّ الْأَعْمَالَ تَتَبَعَضُ وَالْإِيمَانَ يَتَفَاضَلْ لَكِنْ لَا يَسْتَحِقُ لَا يَسْتَحِقُ الْوَصْفُ الْمُطْلَقْ للتوبة وما يستحقه التابعون على الإطلاق من الأوصاف الحميدة والمنازل العالية حتى يتوب إلى الله من جميع الظنوب. So then the Sheikh says repenting from a sin while committing a sin different from the one you repented from is valid. This is because deeds vary and faith also varies in its levels. However, in order for repentance to be considered complete and for an, for an individual to deserve the praiseworthy attributes of the repentant ones and their high ranks, one must repent to Allah from all sins, from all of his sins. So then we move on to the fourth condition. So then the Shaykh, he says the fourth condition, الرابعو أن يعزم على أن لا يعود في المستقبل إلى المأسية لأن هذه ثمرة التوبة ودليل صدق صاحبها فإن قال إنه تائب وهو عازم أو متردد في فعل المأسية يوم ما لم تصح توبته لأن هذه توبة مؤقتة يتحين فيها صاحبه الفرصة المناسبة وَلَا تَدُلُّ عَلَىٰ كَرَاهِيَتِهِ لِلْمَأْسِيَةِ وَفِرَارِهِ مِنَّا إِلَىٰ طَاعَةِ اللَّهِ يَزَّ وَجَلْ So the fourth condition the Shaykh he goes on to say, he says, Having firm resolve to never return back to the sin in the future, this is the fruit of repentance and the proof of the truthfulness of the repenting person. If the person has repented while having the determination to commit sin again in the future, or is reluctant to commit sin, then his repentance will not be valid. This repentance is a temporary repentance in which the repenting person is looking for a suitable chance to recommit the sin. It does not indicate his dislike of that sin and nor does it indicate that he has fled away from it through the obedience of Allah. And that just, uh, just makes me think of uh, uh, the Christian religion, for example, where they believe that Isa a.s. died for their sins and that God died for their sins then there is no need for anybody to repent. You can carry on sinning. Um, it doesn't really matter because Jesus died for your sins. So, you know, in, in, in their belief, of course, which is wrong, but then the murderer, the pedophile, the, the, the one who steals, the thief, um, uh, are all on the same level as the good doer. So there's no difference. So actually, if you think about it, in that religion, with that false principle, 
it actually encourages you to do more evil and follow your desires. So, uh, Alhamdulillah for Islam. Right. And the upright religion of Islam. Alhamdulillah. So then the Shaykh, he says, he moves on to the fifth condition and he says, Al-Khamisu. أَن لَا تَكُونَ بَعْدَ انْتِهَاءِ وَقْتِ قَبُولِ التَّوْبَةِ فَإِنْ كَانَتْ بَعْدَ انْتِهَاءِ وَقْتِ الْقَبُولِ لَمْ تُقْبَلْ وَانْتِهَاءُ وَانْتِهَاءُ وَقْتِ الْقَبُولِ نَوْعَانِ عَامٌ لِكُلِّ أَحَدٍ وَخَاصٌ لِكُلِّ شَخْصٍ بِنَفْسِهِ So then the Shaykh, he says, the fifth condition, the repentance must be done before the deadline for the acceptance of repentance. If he repents after the deadline, his repentance will not be accepted. Now, this is very important now. So we need to pay attention to this. So let's focus on this. Then the Shaykh, he says, he says, فأمل, uh, so he, he says, so there's a specific, so he says the deadline for the repentance being accepted is of two kinds. He says the first deadline is the one which is general for everyone. And the second deadline is the one which is specific for every individual. So he goes on to explain that. He says, فَأَمَّ الْعَامُ فَهُوَ طُلُوعُ الشَّمْسِ مِنْ مَغْرِبِهَا فَإِذَا طَلَعَتَ الشَّمْسِ مِنْ مَغْرِبِهَا لَمْ تَنْفَعْ تَوْبَةُ قَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى يَوْمَ يَأْتِي بَعْدُ آيَاتِ رَبِّكَ لَا يَنْفَعُ نَفْسًا إِيمَانُهَا لَمْ تَكُنْ آمَنَتْ مِنْ قَبْلُ أَوْ كَسَبَتْ فِي إِيبَانِهَا خَيْرًا وَالْمُرَادُ بِبَعْضِ الْآيَاتِ طُلُوعُ الشَّمْسِ مِنْ مَغْرِبِهَا فَصَّرَهَا بِذَلِكَ أَنَّ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ وَعَنْ عَبْدِ اللَّهِ بْنُ عَمْرٍ بْنِ الْعَاصِ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمَا أَنَّ النَّبِيَّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ قَالَ لَا تَزَالُ التَّوْبَةُ تُقْبَلُ حَتَّى تَطْلُعَ الشَّمْسُ مِنْ مَغْرِبِهَا فَإِذَا طَلَعَتْ طُبِعَ عَلَى كُلِّ قَلْبٍ بِمَا فِيهِ وَكَفَى النَّاسَ الْعَمَلَ قال ابن قال ابن كثير حسن الإسناد وعن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من تاب قبل أن تطلع الشمس من مغربها تاب الله عليه رواه مسلم. so then the sheikh says of the first of the two types so the generality so the general repentance yeah the general he says as for the general deadline it is the rising of the sun from the west if the sun rises from the west, repentance will not be beneficial. Allah the Most High said, The day when some of the signs of your Lord shall come, it shall not profit a soul to believe, which had not believed before, nor earned any good by its faith. Surah Al-An'am, verse 158. And what is in the Sheikh says, And what is intended by some here, the word some of his signs, is the rising of the sun from the west. This is the explanation of the Prophet Sallallahu It is narrated that Abdullah ibn Amr ibn Las radiallahu anhuma that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said repentance will continue to be accepted until the sun rises from the west. When the sun rises from the west every heart will be sealed by whatever occupies it and whatever is in it. There will be no more deeds to be accepted from the people after that. Ibn Kathir said its chains of narrations are sound. It is also narrated by Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam he said he said whoever repented before the rising of the sun from the west Allah will accept his repentance collected by Muslim. So just before we move on to the specific deadline what do we mean for some of the people who don't understand may not know what the sun when the sun rises from the west it means that the major sign of the day of judgment that the day that when the sun will rise from the west after that point your iman, you accepting Islam, accepting the truth, um, asking forgiveness, it's finished. The, the actions are finished. No more deeds after that. It will be dealt with. And that will be the final chance. Before that is the final chance. But we don't know when that's going to happen. So we should always, you know, you should, on a daily basis, you know, ask forgiveness from Allah. You know, ask forgiveness from Allah. As, as, as you mentioned in the hadith earlier uh, in, the, in this chapter. So then, let's move on to... Um, the uh, specific deadline, the specific deadline. So that, that's the general deadline, right? So we cover the de uh, the general deadline of a repentance being accepted. Now the Sheikh he says, وَأَمَّا الْخَاسِ فَهُوَ عِنْدَ حُضُورِ الْأَجْلِ فَمَتَى حَضَرَ أَجْلُ الْإِنْسَانِ وَآيَنَ الْمَوْتِ 
لم تنفعه التوبة ولم تقبل منه قال الله تعالى وليست التوبة للذين يعملون السيئات حتى إذا حضر أحدهم الموت قال إني تبت الآن وأن عبد الله بن عمر بن الخطاب رضي الله عنهما أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال إن الله يقبل توبة العبد ما لم يغرغر يعني بروحه رواه أحمد وترمذي وقال حديث حسن So then the shaykh he says ومتى صحت التوبة باجتماع شروطها وقبلت محى الله بها ذلك الذنب الذي تاب منه وإن عظم قال الله تعالى قل يا عبادي قل يا عبادي الذين أسرفوا على أنفسهم لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله إن الله يغفر ذنوب جميعا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم وهذه الآية في التابعين المنيبين إلى ربهم المسلمين له قال الله تعالى ومن يأمل سوءا أو يذلم نفسه ثم يستغفر الله يجد الله غفور رحيما So let's just stop there for a second. So then the Sheikh says, and as for the specific deadline of repentance being accepted, it is when a person's appointed term has arrived. Whenever a person's appointed term arrives, he sees death. So at the time of death, his repentance will not benefit him and it will not be accepted from him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, there is no acceptance of repentance for those who continue to do evil until when death faces one of them. He says, I indeed do repent now. Nor for those who die disbelievers, it is these for whom we have prepared a painful punishment. Surah An-Nisa, verse 18. It is narrated by Abdullah ibn Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhuma that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, indeed Allah accepts the repentance of the one who repents to him as long as his soul did not reach the throat. And the word you know that, that, that when you make that, when people make that sound when they're dying, like as if they're drowning, that that kind of choking, that's what yugargir is. When that happens, that's it. The deadline's been reached. And this was, uh, that hadith was collected by Ahmad, uh, uh, by Ahmad and At-Tirmidhi and Al-Bani graded to be sound in Sahih At-Tirmidhi. So then uh, the Shaykh says, whenever the repentance is valid with all the conditions fulfilled and Allah has accepted the repentance, Allah will wipe away his repentance. The sin which we uh, he will wipe away that sin, the sin which he has repented from, that will be wiped away. The sin will be wiped away. Allah the Most High said, Say, O oh my slaves who have wronged themselves, despair not of the mercy of Allah. Don't despair from the mercy of Allah. Surely Allah forgives all sins. Verily, He is most forgiven, ever merciful. Surah to Zumar, verse 53. The, first, the verse is referring to those who turn to their Lord in repentance, submitting to His will. Allah the Most High also said, and whoso does evil or wrongs his soul and then asks forgiveness, Allah will find, uh, he will find Allah most forgiving and merciful. And whoso does evil or wrongs his soul and then asks forgiveness of Allah, will find Allah most forgiving and merciful. Surah An-Nisa, verse 110. So then the Shaykh, he says, he says, just to close and to uh, Close to, to, to close here, uh, he says, فَبَادِرُوا رَحْمَكُمُ اللَّهِ أَمَارَكُمْ بِالتَّوْبَةِ النَّصُوحِ إِلَىٰ رَبِّكُمْ قَبْلَ أَنْ يَفْجَأَكُمْ قَبْلَ أَنْ يَفْجَأَكُمْ الْمَوْتِ فَلَا تَسْتَتِعُونَ الْخَلَاسِ So then the Shaykh says, therefore, you know, run towards this repentance. Don't wait. Run towards it. Hasten towards it with your lives, towards repenting to your Lord. May Allah have mercy on you all before death overtakes you and you will afterwards not be able to rescue yourselves. That's what he said. And then the Shaykh, he concludes with the dua. And he says, Allahumma wafiqna li tawbatin nasuhi allati tamhu biha ma salafa min dhunubina wa yasinna lil yusra wa jannibna al usra وَغْفِرْ لَنَا وَلِوَالِدِينَ وَلِجَمِيعِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ فِي الْآخِرَةِ وَالْأُولَى بِرَحْمَتِكَ يَا أَرْحَمَ الرَّاحِمِينَ وَصَلَّى اللَّهُ وَسَلَّمَ عَلَى نَبِيَّنَا مُحَمَدٍ وَآلِهِ وَصَحْبِهِ أَجْمَعِينَ
So then uh, the rough translation of that dua, uh, the Sheikh says, oh, um, he says, Oh Allah, grant to success towards sincere repentance that will wipe away our previous sins. Oh Allah, ease on us the path of ease. Forgive us our, uh, it says, ease us the path of ease and, and likewise keep us away, keep us away from hard, uh, the path of hardship. Forgive us and our parents and all of the Muslims, uh, the former generations uh, and the latter generations, on, with your mercy, you are the most merciful. May peace and blessings of Allah be upon our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his family members and all his companions. So we conclude there, uh, alhamdulillah. And um, uh, final lesson is tomorrow uh, with Brother Wasib, inshallah. So we'll conclude uh, this book, alhamdulillah. Uh, with the final lesson with Nay Ta'ala tomorrow. Barakallah fikum. Subhanakullah wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha ilan. Astaghfiruka wa tubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.